those who are entitled to zakah. The upright Islamic legislation did not leave us without any detailed explanation of how to spend zakah, as Allah specified the categories of those who are entitled to zakah. As He says, as or zakah are only for the fuqara, meaning the poor, and the masakin, meaning the needy, those employed to collect the zakah, those whose hearts are inclined towards Islam, to free captives and for those in debt, for Allah's cause, that is, for those fighting in holy battles, and for the wayfarer, that is, a traveller who is cut off from everything. A duty imposed by Allah. Allah is the All-Knower, the All-Wise. The first of these categories are the poor. A poor person is one who does not have anything with which he can fulfill his basic needs and that of his family, that is food and drink, clothing and shelter. He is given from zakah that which is enough to sustain him and his family for a complete year. As for the second category, they include the needy. A needy person is one who possesses half of his need or more. For example, a person with a hundred but needs two hundred. The balance he needs is given to him and his family for a year. The third category refers to the administrators who have been appointed by the authorities to gather and distribute zakah. And the fourth category is represented by those whose hearts are inclined towards Islam and the Muslims. These are respected leaders, for whom it is hoped by giving them zakah that they will either accept Islam, refrain from evil, have their faith strengthened, that is, if they are already Muslims, or defend the Muslims against an enemy. They are given from the zakah an amount that results in their hearts being inclined towards Islam, God willing. The fifth category is identified in Allah saying, to free captives. And he meant by this to free the slave so that each one of them is able to become a completely free man and a useful member of the society and be able to worship Allah the Most High in the best manner. Paying the ransom for Muslim prisoners of war is also included in this category. As for the sixth category, they include those who are in debt. There are two types of debtors. The first type refers to a person who incurs a debt to fulfill his personal needs. He is given from zakah an amount to pay the debt if he is poor. The second type refers to a person who incurs a debt as a result of reconciling two groups of Muslims. He is given from zakah an amount to pay his debt, even if he is rich. The seventh category of recipients of zakah includes those who are fighting in the cause of Allah to raise the words of Allah, so that the words of Allah are heard and respected throughout the land. Also included in this category are numerous da'wah activities that are counted as striving in the cause of Allah, if such could not be sponsored or sustained through non-obligatory arms or sadaqah. The eighth and final category is the wayfarer who is stranded and has no money with him. He is given from zakah an amount that ensures his safe delivery to his country of residence, even if he is rich in his own country. Any other groups besides these eight categories cannot receive zakah, even if it is for a good and philanthropic cause. For example, for mosques, schools, hospitals, and other charitable causes which are eligible for alms. The scholars have also stressed that it is not a condition to cover all of the eight categories mentioned. Rather, it suffices if any of them is given the zakah according to the needs of the time. It is not permissible to give zakah to the rich or those who are strong enough to earn a living due to the Prophet's statement, peace and blessings be upon him. There is no share in it, that is, the zakah for the rich and those who are strong and able to earn a living. Similarly, it is not permissible to pay zakah to one's parents, 
grandparents, etc. Or children and grandchildren, etc. And also wives, as they are all those whom a Muslim is obliged to support financially. Likewise, it is not permissible to give zakah to disbelievers whose hearts are not inclined towards Islam, etc. Due to the Prophet's statement, peace and blessings be upon him, it, meaning zakah, is collected from their rich and given to their poor, meaning the Muslims. And zakah is not permissible for the household of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as a mark of honor and respect towards them. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Indeed, these alms are only people's impurities, and indeed they are not permissible for Muhammad and his household.